sorry. So I am glad to open uh, the panel session on uh, control for societal challenges. Um, control uh, for societal challenges are addressed by the um, IFAC Coordinate Committee CC9 on social uh, systems. Uh, in a few words, uh, this represents uh, numerous uh, uh, new domains of interest where uh, human activities are merged, mixed, uh, with uh, virtual cyber and social spaces. Uh, control for societal challenges call us, uh, for new methodologies uh, at the crossroads of uh, several disciplines. In this uh, CC9, our main objectives, I would say, uh, briefly, uh, is to offer a room of a great potential of uh, research and technical development. Uh, moreover, uh, this CC has also the important role of influencing our control community uh, to think deeper about the further purpose and consequences of our work. So two um, important objectives. So to, to uh, discuss this, um, we, we will have representing from uh, uh, each uh, technical committees. So for the TC91, which is uh, Economy, Business and Financial Systems, uh, Yong Yuang uh, will um, represent uh, uh, the, the chair of uh, TC91, uh, uh, and especially the incoming uh, chair, Pew Wang. Uh, then we will have a um, presentation by uh, Wilfried Periketty from uh, uh, CNRS, uh, the uh, Crystal Lab uh, in Lille, in France. So um, he is the chair of the Social Impact and Automation Technical Committee. Uh, then we will have a presentation by um, King Shishan Jiwa, or Samuel. Uh, from, um, we will present the activities of the Technical Committee on Control for Smart Cities. Then um, Sebastian Dormido from uh, UNED um, in uh, Madrid, in Spain, uh, so on control education. Uh, and finally, uh, Larry Stapleton uh, will uh, present the activity of the, uh, the, the 9.5 on technology, culture, and national stability. And our second part of this panel will consist on an open discussion with uh, the floor, with you, uh, moderated by the incoming CC9 chair, which, who is uh, Larry. Okay, so I give the floor now to uh, Yong Yuang for uh, his presentation on the objective and scope uh, of uh, the first technical committee. Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Yuan. Uh, the incoming chair of our TC is Professor Fei Wang, and he just left Toulouse uh, yesterday after our TC panel due to urgent business. So on his behalf, it's my great honor to present this report to you. Uh, incoming and outgoing chairs of our TC are Professor Fei Wang from the Chinese Academy of Sciences and uh, uh, Professor Philip Chen from the University of Marco, uh, respectively. Uh, Professor Wang was the chair from 2008 to 2040. Uh, and uh, from 2040 to 2070, Professor Philip Chen took over our TC as chair, and uh, I was the co-chair and the secretary. And uh, in the next triennium, from 2017 to 2020, Professor Wang uh, was appointed to chair this TC again. Uh, as to our future activities, uh, we propose to uh, th we propose the, th the following three series of conference. The first one is IEEE SMC workshop on social computing and social intelligence. And the first workshop 
on SCSI will be held on October 4th, 5th, 2017 at Banff, Canada. And uh, we here um, propose to uh, propose that the that this workshop uh, is co -spon is is sponsored by AFEC and I Triple E. Uh, alternatively, starting from 2018, uh, that is in 2018, this workshop is will be held in Japan uh, together with the Triple E SMC annual conference, and IFAC will be a co-sponsor. And 20 and in 2019 in Toronto, uh, IFAC will, will be a major sponsor and IGBE will be a co-sponsor. Uh, this is the first one. The second one is the International Symposium on Blockchain and uh, Knowledge Automation. The first, uh, the first symposium was held on April 3rd to 4th, uh, 2017 at Dev, U, uh, USA. And we have eight keynote speech and over 100 researchers of blockchain, smart contract, and, block and knowledge automation attending this conference, this symposium. And uh, we here propose to have this symposium sponsored by IFAC so that uh, uh, we believe it can serve as a good uh, communication platform for our, for the FinTech researchers in our TC. And the third one is uh, we propose to uh, launch a new series of conference called IFAC International Conference on Economic Business and the Financial System. And this is exactly the name, the name of our TC, and uh, it is fully sponsored by IFAC. So uh, we will submit our proposal uh, for these activities later on. We also plan to launch a new journal called IFAC, Journal of Cyber Physical Social System. And the idea is motivated by the fact that the CPS, uh, so or Cyber Physical System, and the CPSS, or Cyber-Physical Social System, have emerged as a hot research topic. And this brings us a lot of research opportunities, as, as, as well as challenges in the management and control of such CPS, CPSS, or computational social system. So we plan to launch this uh, journal uh, in this topic. And the other topics include social computing, knowledge automation, and social intelligence. So uh, that's all for my report. Thank you. Thank you. So now I give the floor to Thank you, Francois, for this introduction. So let me uh, give you a brief presentation about this uh, TC92, which uh, deals with social impact of automation. So here are um, the vice chair and the members of uh, this TC. Mariana Neto, she's uh, actually just uh, sitting there. And uh, other people that are really active in uh, this uh, TC, Sarah Spurgeon, Fei Yu Wang, that will become the new uh, TC chair of uh, 9.2, and Gan Zeng. Then you have a list of members here. And you can find below the uh, link to the website. As usual, it's uh, tcifaccontrol.org slash then the number of the TC. Well, as you know, this uh, information and communication technology is a global revolution which impact a lot our daily life in uh, many things from uh, uh, extending uh, our abilities to, to provide uh, action, sensory, and cognitive abilities to many situations. For example, uh, autonomy and versatility uh, for robots and cyber physical system. We will focus uh, on this a uh, little bit more after. These tools are also impacting uh, forecasting and decision making, which uh, of course are involving uh, human being and, uh, and the society. And uh, of course, in this decision process, uh, we are collecting uh, daily thousands of data, but the most uh, important thing is that humans are collecting much more than uh, what we can collect with uh, 
send Saul. This revolution comes in a technological component, but also in human and social component. This impacts uh, many uh, 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 many areas of our society. Uh, for which we are uh, looking at uh, monitoring, supervising, and controlling our uh, environment. Of course, mobility, integration of renewable energy and e energy efficiency, factory, new factory, and so on. So this TC addresses relation between automated systems that are impacting our daily life with uh, all social environments. This includes also social effect of automation, which can be desirable sometimes, but not uh, other, other times. And of course, uh, people are, have to, to accept, because they are the end user of this uh, uh, automated system that we are providing. And we have to take care about uh, what will be the use of what we do for this uh, automated system. Because, uh, of course, as you know, some, sometimes some uh, systems that we design are not uh, used as we uh, plan to do, to do it. Uh, for example, uh, the most uh, known example is uh, your mobile phone, phone that was uh, at the first uh, used for only for, uh, to, to have call phone call, but now it's uh, more computer than other. And uh, so we have to think about these kind of things. The topics are really centered on human and system engineering for social technical e equilibrium. So this is a list of uh, what we are addressing uh, as a topic. But I will uh, jump uh, quickly to uh, the working groups, which is really active and uh, uh, providing a deep uh, um, effort on, on these topics. So this is a focus on this working group that is uh, called Cyber Physical and Human System. And uh, this group is uh, addressing uh, four issues. <laughs> One is human machine symbiosis, so you can uh, uh, think about uh, exoskeleton and things like that. We are more and more incorporating in uh, our body and uh, in our uh, uh, in our body uh, <coughs> automated system. The second topic is about human and oper operators as operators of complex engineering system. In many situations, we have some interaction between uh, these automatic design uh, systems and uh, man, and the decision has to be taken between uh, the machine and the man. And the problem is, of course, to know what is a good balance between the decision and who has to, to be, uh, at the end, the, um, uh, the um, priority. Is it the, the machine or the man? So this is the case for uh, aircraft or spacecraft control and so on. A third item is about humans as uh, agents in multi-agent systems. So you can think about uh, collective behavior of human, for example. And this uh, behavior are very uh, useful to be uh, well understood. For example, if you look at uh, road transportation, because uh, even if we are going to have uh, more and more automated uh, uh, cars and autonomous cars, there will be still a driver, sometimes that will be uh, doing other things than driving, but sometimes he, he will have to take uh, the control of the car also. So we have to, to see what will be the balance between the decision of the man and the machine. And um, also the last uh, item is about humans as si elements in control system. Of course, uh, in our daily life, there is a lot of control systems that are aiming at uh, providing a, a well-being uh, for these uh, humans. For example, uh, just uh, to have a good right temperature in, uh, in home and so on. To provide uh, rescue robotics in smart city, for example. And uh, the last item is about, well, within, within this item is about social network for controlling public opinion that is a growing also area.
So based on these uh, items uh, that are uh, uh, the core of this working group, there is uh, a new uh, conference that started uh, now uh, one year ago. So the first uh, IFA conference on cyber physical and human system took place in uh, Brazil, thanks to uh, a team of women, <laughs> because uh, it was led by uh, Mariana, but Sarah Spurgeon was also involved, and uh, Francois too. And uh, I have mentioned that there is a lot of women in this, uh, in this TC that are uh, really active and doing uh, great things. So that was the first event. And uh, I'm pleased to announce you that the next one will be uh, la uh, next year, and it will be just before the CDC. It will take two place. Uh, it will take place in uh, Miami. So this is the announcement of this uh, of this uh, new uh, uh, conference. So I have finished my presentation about the CDC. Thank you. So my name is Jia Xingshan in Chinese, and some of my Western friends call me Samuel. Now I'm here to record the progress made by the TC 9.3, the control for smart cities. I was told to spend only three or five minutes, so I try to be short. In one sentence, what this TC tried to accomplish is to synthesize two different viewpoints about smart cities. One viewpoint is related to the different application domains related to smart city. For example, when we talk about making cities smarter, we think about making our homes more comfortable, making our office more efficient, making our shopping malls more commercial. So how do you make buildings to be more comfortable, more energy efficient, and how you want to incorporate more renewable energy into that building would be one focus of the TC, but not the entire one. A second application domain is the transportation system. How do you want to incorporate the autonomous electric vehicles into the traditional vehicles, when you're talking about the traffic jam, when you try to make the transportation more intelligent, well, that is another application domain. A third one is the mobility. When you drive cars in crowded cities, like the city in Beijing, where the population is 3.6 million people living in the same city, now how are you going to park cars how are you going to minimize the travel time and try to minimize the CO2 emission in the same time? That is a question we consider in this TC. Another example is the water system. I know the water system here in European countries are pretty good. In many of the countries here, you can actually drink tap water, but that is not the case in many other parts of the world. How are you going to distribute water to smart cities, to the citizens? Last but not least, security. How do you respond to emergency? How are you going to evacuate people from a metropolitan city? How are you going to evacuate people while guarantee certain priority things? And how are you going to maintain the pollution control? Those are one viewpoint, starting from the different application domains related to smart cities. We have to notice there is another viewpoint which is to discuss the common challenges and the methodologies in the control problems shared among these various domains. For example, people, the human beings, are part of the system. So how are you going to consider the game behavior among those systems? How are you going to think about the human system interaction when we control the subject? How are we going to consider the uncertainty and the randomness, how to model that, how to simulate, how to improve and optimize systems. So methodologies and models such as Markov decision process, simulation-based optimization, machine learning together with reinforcement learning would be some of the examples from the second viewpoint. So in one sentence, we try to synthesize the two different viewpoints in our TC. 
Now, we have four chairs and VP, v, vice chairs. Me, uh, represent Tsinghua University, actually from, from China. Christos Cassandras, most of you have been listening to his plenary already from Boston University uh, in USA. Alessandro Laparcio is from University of Manchester, United Kingdom. Andreas Manikopoulos uh, is originally from the uh, Oak Ridge National Lab, but right now he's a social professor in University of Delaware in USA. We were only established in October 2015. So this TC is a very young TC. Already we have almost 10 TC members. So I was very happy to see many of you joining this panel session later on because I think well, you could be the future members of this TC. And also for the TC 9.2, we see many overlaps. So probably I can steal some of the members from your TC to join mine. So although we were only like one and a half year old, but we tried our best to co-sponsor technical events related to our TC. We did some special sessions in various conferences. We organized the workshops together with other TCs of IFAC. And right now, we are in the middle of proposing a special issue on Internet of Things for smart and sensing systems. So one sentence on comment on that, because Internet of Things is really one important technique that is going to fundamentally revolutionize how we live in a better future world. So given that has been said, we start from small, and right now it's young. So all of you are welcome to send me emails and joining me. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning everybody. I think that uh, control education has a long tradition in the IFAC uh, community. I must remember that in 1977, uh, the first conference on control education was held in Barcelona. It was new trends in control education. At that moment, uh, IFAC people decided to uh, begin a new series of symposium related to control education. It was the series of symposium advanced control education. Uh, in this minute that I have in order to show you our activity, I will invite you to visit our website pages in, in IFA because this is the okay. I am going to connect with the IFA web pages, and then you have here all the elements, we update every uh, month the activities and the uh, news about control education. Uh, we maintain uh, also as chair, I am the outgoing chair, uh, the next chair will be uh, Professor Anthony Rossiter, and uh, uh, every four months I, heard, I send to submit to all the members of our committee a message giving news and giving feedback in order the activity that we are uh, celebrating. Uh, the number of the members are uh, 77. You have the list here. Well, wait a moment, because I have to another part. Well, no problem. And uh, you can see the list in our um, website. The main activity of our committee are the, the, the start, the flag, is the Advanced Control Education Symposium. You can see here the series. We start in, in 1988 in Swansea. In the last, it was celebrated in Bratislava in 2016. Every three years, as you know, symposium are in the master plan of IFA, and every three years we need to, to celebrate an IFA symposium. And our idea as a control education, uh, you know, is a, an horizontal uh, committee because all of us are interested in, in, in education. Education in a broad sense, because education is not only for engineering. Now, at the moment, the challenge is to extend the, the, the learning and process uh, and the teaching of control uh, concepts to people who are in other fields. Uh, and that is one of the, the, the key issues, the, the, to 
extend a contrary education idea to non-traditional audience. By the way, I can say that the last uh, Harold Chennat Prize, that was our committee quite involved in this prize, has been given to a book, textbook, uh, that is in not uh, uh, for non-traditional audience. The, the book from Professor Alberto Semaril, A Feedback and Control for Everyone, the title reflects this kind of, of, of feeling. The, sec uh, the second activity important in our committee is the series of internet-based control education. That means that we think that the new the, uh, tool, the new technology, can be adapted for people in order to, to teach, uh, in order to promote the, the, the concept of, of control to our students. We promote in a very active way the concept of interaction and uh, virtual and remote lab and something like that. In the third main activity is uh, the Harold Chestnut uh, uh, Prize. Okay. <laughs> we maintain also a very ambitious project. I will here. That is a repository. We are now working in a, a repository for material. This is an ambitious project, but we, we need the cooperation of all committee in order to fit uh, all the, this element. Uh, we are w uh, talking very, very close to with Bosnia and Apache Duncan, that is the, the liaison in the technical board uh, on education. That means that in, at that moment, HIFAS has a very commitment related with the, the, the use of education for all of us. And uh, we have decided in, in the last meeting sir, that we held yesterday here in, in Toulouse that the next advanced control education symposium we will held in uh, Philadelphia in 2019 in conjunction with the uh, American Control Conference. We have a lot of time without visit uh, USA, and I am very uh, glad in order to say you, to invite you to, to attend this, this main conference. In between, we are going to celebrate an internet-based control education and a PID control conference in 2018 in Gandhi University. In all this period, we have also co-sponsored more than 10 events related in another committee, and we have participated with uh, some uh, invited session applying a control education. And by the way, at the end, I would like to say that uh, in this conference, uh, in IFA World Congress, we have held three uh, regular sessions for control education is, is important, and also a very successful uh, demonstrator panel on control education with more than uh, 15 uh, uh, demonstrators that was yesterday. It was a very success and very good interaction between all the attendees in this uh, panel demonstrator. That is all. Thank you for your attention. Okay. Hi, I'm the outgoing chair for the technical committee, TC95, the fifth of the technical committees in CC9. The incoming chair is in front of me here, is Professor Peter Kopacek, who is waving his hand. If you want to get involved with our technical committee, contact either of us, um, and certainly feel free to deluge Peter Kopacek's email uh, with emails requesting membership or requesting more information or anything like this. Um, thesis is one of the oldest technical committees in IFAC, and it's one of the most active. Its origins go back as into the early 1980s, and um, it started uh, with a working group called Supplemental Ways of Improving International Stability, the concerns being how to apply control and automation ideas, and systems concepts such as stability and feedback and other sorts of ideas like this into the international sphere. And to put it into context, at the time, uh, the world was in a state of Cold War. Uh, the international situation was very complex and difficult. And this was a, an IFAC initiative to engage with those sorts of problems. And this is very much the spirit of TC95. Our, our idea is to have an IFAC engagement and, uh, and a discourse within which we invite non-IFAC, traditional non-IFAC disciplines in, and we, have a, uh, we, we look at how can the work of IFAC be uh, um, applied in this in situation in the international context. Um, so we foster cross-disciplinary engagement between IFAC and into other disciplines also. 
The scope is very large, and like Sebastian, I, I would direct you to our website to get a, a, a better idea of all the different areas that we cover. Um, but the bottom line, I suppose, for us is anything where we can apply control and automation concepts, theories, applications in relation to the international development and international context in general to improve stability and improve the conditions for humanity, then we're interested. So the work that we do takes us into developing regions. We do a lot of work in less developed regions to support, to help to build capacity, to um, uh, foster IFAC activities, and also to learn what are the real situations on the ground that people are facing, and how can we engage in a positive way in those uh, conditions, in those uh, situations. Um, we have a working group in engineering ethics. I just came from a session. We had a very good session. Uh, this is chaired by Marion over here, Marion Hirsch, who's waving. And um, this is a very active group, this working group, and we have a lot of work in this space. Um, we do a lot of work in the area of peace and conflict studies, looking at how IFAC uh, research and activities can support world peace. And in fact, we have a special issue of artificial intelligence and society. It's an international journal, uh, with, which is headline is um, World Peace and Conflict Studies. We do work in uh, technical, uh, sorry, in, in environmental challenges also, of course. Climate change is a major source of concern in the international context. Um, we have a working group in end-of-life management, um, but, and we also have other activities related to um, areas such as even as, as broad as migration across to uh, international political issues and so on. We look at advanced technical applications in our technical committee also. We're very interested in really practical solutions to the problem. So in the last two trienniums or so, we've had papers in areas including telemedicine, um, global industrial systems, migration and human trafficking I've mentioned, climate change, financial systems, uh, including microfinance systems and applications in developing contexts. Robotics and mechatronics, for example, the research in Vienna on um, automated landmine clearance um, and systems in that area. Uh, we have a working group in cost-oriented automation and control, which has a long tradition within IFAC, uh, looking at how do we develop applications which are not so expensive and are, are very practical in terms of a, a low-cost situation that, in which they might be deployed. Um, we also uh, in, have in our scope social networking, which is an important aspect of international stability. And we look at institutional issues, institutional regulation and control, um, which I think is almost one of the most important issues for the last 10 years in the international scene with the, the failure in, in uh, global financial services as a, as a classic example but also other sorts of institutional failures that we look at. And as I say, you can take a look at our web page and see more about what we're doing. This is just to give you a taste. Um, as I said, the, the working group was traditionally known as supplemental ways of improving international stability, but such was the activity and the broadening scope and horizon of the, of the technical committee and also the support of the IFAC technical board as we push things forward over the last um, 10 or more years, many more years going back into the 90s, uh, it was decided to rename the technical committee uh, Technolo Technology, Culture and International Stability. Um, even then it was difficult to capture everything that we do and I know um, ethics should probably be the E there as well um, because we have such a strong ethics group. But the idea was to try and reflect much, a much more expanded focus. And uh, we have now over 80 members in our technical committee, and these members represent over 20 countries. It's a very active, very large community. Um, within the community, we have four working groups, including a, a new working group which focuses on the contributions and supporting young members, to, new people to IFAC and emerging research in our domain. Uh, so that we can create some intergenerational activities and discourse. 
To give you some idea of how active we are, um, since 2011 in Milan, uh, we have had a conference, international conference almost every year. We had an international conference in Ireland in 2012, in Kosovo, in inter an international conference in 2013 in Pristina. In 2014 in Cape Town, we have TC95 sessions. Um, in 2015, we had a conference in Sosopol, in Bulgaria, on the Black Sea. We go to some nice places. Um, we had uh, another conference, but we picked another beach this time, uh, in Duras, in Albania, on the Adriatic Riviera. If you, you'd come just for that, wouldn't you, to these conferences? And next year it gets better, I'll tell you in a moment. So uh, in Duras we had over 60 papers, and, Al and Albania is, is new to IFAC, and we're, we're trying to encourage them to become m more formally involved. Here in Toulouse at the World Conference we have four sessions. Um, there is a session later today uh, at, at um, 3.30, I think, Marion. No, the one is in the Okay, thank you. In the DM. Okay, and in, uh, thank you. And next year, this is an invitation. Um, we are having TSIS 2018 International Conference in Baku, and I was, I saw the proposal, I was part of the team who put, who, who put the proposal together, working with the Azerbaijani community, and all the photos look great. So, for, for a academic tourists among you, I would really encourage you to come and get involved. Since 2014, we've had two special issue journals in artificial intelligence and society. We have another one coming out on world peace this year. And uh, two books, on, one has come out uh, about two years ago in engineering ethics, and we have another one on the way. Um, so, please join us. Our next, uh, we're fortunate, un unlike the other technical committees, they didn't get this opportunity to do advertising because they had their meetings earlier in the week. But we have a, a technical committee meeting at four o'clock today. Um, how do you become a member of an IFAC technical committee? You have to be invited, okay? So you are now invited, so it's that pr we have got over that. So please come at four o'clock today. Tangovia room in the Novotel. Uh, turn right when you enter Novotel, they'll tell you how to get there. And finally, as I said, come to TSIS 2018 next September in Baku in Azerbaijan. We'd love to see you there. Thank you. Let's see how we'll get on. As Francoise has already explained, um, CC9 is a unique uh, community of technical committees. Uh, it exists at the crossroads of several disciplines in which control and automation are really, really almost critical, I think, in, in many ways to what's going on in human society. And the uh, under uh, Francoise able leadership in the, since Milan uh, in the last six years. She's done a lot of work to help us to, to re restructure a little bit, our, or a lot, our CC9, and, um, and get some new focus in there and some new energy. And uh, it's done a great job. And thank you so much, Francoise. And I, I've, um, unfortunately for her, I've already asked her to, to stay around nearby. So I will be calling on your, your guidance and support as in, the, in the next triennium. Um, there are some new developments planned. We're in, in, there are some conversations going on. Uh, let me just explain a little bit some of what's going on. I think the most important thing with any uh, group of technical committees or any technical committee is to build the community. And, to cr and part of building the community is to support the community to give uh, opportunities and challenge channels for researchers, particularly young researchers, to bring their work on. I, I've, I haven't got to all the sessions I would like to have got to this week, but I, I got to some of the poster sessions, and there's really wonderful new research coming in many different areas. Um, so to, to nurture this and to, to enable these researchers to have channels through which they can they can build their their careers and their work. So. Um, it already within, TC9, within the TCs, you've seen that they're very active in this way, and there's some special issues you've heard about um, in, in, uh, in, uh, right across these groups of technical committees. And um, so there is a real opportunity for new and also established researchers to not only have a, a research papers 
for example, working papers at a CC9 event, but to build that work up into journal level papers and, and, and further. Um, and I think this is really important. And so just to signal to you, we are in conversation. I met with um, Bob Bitmead yesterday and Dan Cho, and we're, having, we're just looking at ways that we can build that up even further than we have already to try and support the research within CC9 and bring it on. What I would just would ask all young researchers who are here um, or who are new to IFAC, I think one of the most important things within IFAC to understand is the role of the technical committees in IFAC. They are really the, the heartbeat of our community. And so if you saw something today that was interesting to you, I would ask you, I would invite you uh, to make contact with the technical committee chair in that area or for, or you, if you are not sure where you might feel you might, your work might fit in, contact me and I'll help. So we're here to support you, okay, and to, and to help you to become um, more and more part of the family that we call IFAC. In terms of building this community, one, uh, one, something that you've probably seen today, which is unusual in CC9, is that there are intersecting elements of scope. So one classic example you saw on a number of the slides there was social networks. So social networking uh, is becoming relevant for at least three and maybe all of our TCs across CC9. And so what we're doing is we're having some conversations. I know I've had some meetings with the TC chairs to look at, is it possible that instead of worrying about where do the boundaries exist between our TCs, but the possibility of more, uh, more engagement across the, uh, in these intersecting areas. And we have experience of this before. In, uh, some years ago, um, Professor Kopacek put together a multi-track conference, and, um, which has, has been done in other areas of IFAC too, but in CC9 he put together a multi-track conference in Vienna. We had three technical committees represented, as I remember. Not of all of them were CC9. There was at least one outside CC9. And it was a very successful event. So th these are the sorts of things, just to let you know where our thinking lies. We're, we're thinking about some of these things. If the work develops in an area that's an intersecting area, then we'll try to value that and to bring it forward through such events. So that's IFAC, and the internals of IFAC, if you like. But what about IFAC's relevance in, uh, in society more generally, because IFAC is a part of humanity. It's a part of, of the international scene. It's part of society. In fact, um, as someone has pointed out to me, it's, it's an unusual example of a successful international community and um, maybe would make a really good case study for research. So I think social scientists may be coming your way shortly. I'm not sure. But Given the, the current challenges that are faced by human societies and humanity across the world, some of which are, are existential, like climate change, um, there is a strong consensus building within our community that IFAC has the capacity to engage with this in a really helpful way. But it also has a moral responsibility to do it. That's each of our engineers, not just CC9 people, but everybody within IFAC. And, and I think we're embracing that idea. There are some tentative proposals that we're working on as to what our priorities should be in this space, but I want to open that conversation up to you. We've had sessions within the technical committees on this, but this is an invitation now. If you have some ideas what you think should be priorities, then please email me, make contact with me, or make contact with one of the TC chairs, and, and let's get that, those ideas together because I want to formulate some kind of a proposal that's coming from you, because you are IFAC. Um, there are other areas as well that maybe we could be looking at. Um, some other developments within CC9 that are in the proposal stage at the moment include a new technical committee, TC96, which will be a breakout from TC91, um, and we, we've, uh, TC91 and, and uh, myself and Francoise have been looking at this, and TC96 would be focusing on financial systems. That's the proposal, and, uh, and uh, I know Dan is involved in this as well. So. Keep that on your, in your mind. There, there may be a new technical committee coming, and if this is an area of interest for you, 
then let us know and we'll, we'll incorporate you into that community. We would love to have you as part of that community. Um, I'm also in conversation with national safety agencies uh, in Europe mainly um, in advanced engineering context. I think the whole area of regulation and control in general beyond financial systems, for example, is very, very important um, into the future. And it's an area that IFAC, through the social effects coordinating committee, can really have an impact because there's a greater and greater awareness of the social and human factors that are involved in catastrophic failures, failure in uh, advanced engineering systems like aviation, uh, railway uh, networks, and so on, and financial systems, of course, too. So um, these are just some of the things that are in the air. We would love to hear from you to see, hear what your thoughts are, what, the, what you're working on, and to figure out how can we uh, support you and, and, uh, and by bringing you into the community and giving you some practical um, supports. As I said, get in contact with us and don't go away from IFAC without becoming a part of at least one technical committee and getting some sense of what's going on in, that t in your area. As I said, um, there is a technical committee meeting later today, but for those technical committee meetings that have already happened, do connect into the, the chairs. Thanks very much. We, we have a few minutes for um, questions and comments, uh, so we would like to hear from you. Anybody would like to jump in? People are looking at their watches. I think it's lunchtime, Larry. Yeah. I'm taking that as a no or I'm missing you. Do I see somebody? Marion, I Um, yes, I hope I'm now not booming in your, your ears. I think for a long time there's been the development of technologies of different types with too little concentration on their, their impacts, the wider implications how we can actually use them to create a better, a more just, a more fun society. And I think part of the role of all the CC9 technical communities is sort of bringing in the, these issues that we don't just develop technologies because they're possible, but in some cases we say no. We also look quite explicitly and directly at what, what makes a positive impact. Because, you know, on the one hand, we have incredible possibilities to make the world a better place, to make all our lives much easier. On the other hand, we've got horrendous threats, climate change, which is supposed approaching catastrophe fairly quickly, horrendous weapons of mass destruction, though they're also positive, uh, news like the recently signed convention to ban nuclear weapons. And as engineers, scientists, computer scientists, professionals working with information, automation, and other technologies, it's important we have a role in this, and that's part of the work of this committee, mm. It's also important that we train our students, if not in education, that we mentor younger colleagues, and that's also for those of us in education, <laughs> so that these issues become part of the mainstream. Marion, perhaps it's, it's um, necessary then, from the perspective of the working group in ethics, and also control education, yeah. that we would have a conversation there. 
But as you were talking, just something occurred to me, um, if I may, um, because I'm hearing a challenge in what you're saying. It, it, it's not just an invitation, but I think it's a challenge to us as um, scientists and engineers. And the challenge that I heard is for us to reflect upon, each one of us, how does our research impact upon the society in which we live? Um, why is our research important for society or for humanity more broadly? And I was also thinking about the other side of it, and I know something that you've drawn our attention to many times, Marion, is sometimes the difficulties of being a social actor as an engineer, the, the, the tensions that come with that um, if we're doing uh, research in, I mean, you mentioned military, for example, applications. Um, so what social challenges, perhaps they're ethical challenges, I don't know, but do you face as an academic or as a practitioner as you engage in your work? And as you think about those questions, what I would suggest is that what might happen is that you might realize or you, you might come to understand, this is what happened to me, that CC9, that you have something to say to CC9 or through CC9. That is, um, you, you, come, you, you might therefore look at the technical committees and the working groups there and find a home for that part of you that is concerned and, and interested and, and inspired to contribute as an, an IFAC member to broader society and to humanity. So I, I just wanted to pick that up, Marion, because I know this is something that you challenge us on a lot. And maybe this is a forum just to bring that to your attention. Yeah, no, thanks. And I would agree also with the links with the um, education working group. I mean, I think there, there are a lot of things which ought to be automatic, good practice, underpeer in education, and don't, and don't happen. And I think as a community, yeah. we should be having influence there. That's great. Thanks very much, Marion. Appreciate it. So if there are no more comments, because I, I, I just pause for a moment, like at a wedding in Ireland, we, we do this. I'm hoping we've, OK. Oh, one. OK. Excuse me, I missed you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I uh, present myself. I have uh, now a co-chair of the DC Human Machine System. So my, my question is uh, because uh, my CC chair asked us what about the possible interaction with uh, yes. your TC yes. and other TC. I know that yeah. we have a lot of work to do, but I wanted also to invite you because my TC, mm. Human Machine System, is involved with your CC in uh, the yes. IFAC conference. Uh, uh, CPHS, so I am glad to participate to this, and I am really motivated. So I wanted to to, to make some comment regarding the challenges. Um, you know that uh, we will do. What about the concept of doing more with fewer people? That is to say, we have um, to to take into account that uh, will machines capable in the future to make scientific discovery, for example. So I. <laughs> It's uh, perhaps for you uh, not a stupid questions, but um, I am editor-in-chief of a journal Cognition, Technology and Work, and a special issue will, uh, will be printed soon uh, regarding these topics, doing more with fewer people. So the, the question is, um, in the long term, what about the abilities of humans facing the increasing mm. of automation? So it's very, very, very important in the long yes. term. That is to say, regarding the evolution of human being, some people said that our abilities will decrease because uh, we will do uh, less and less things because uh, 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 robot automations will be more for us. It's good, but be careful because in long term, perhaps, it will be decreasing of our capabil uh, cognitive capabilities, for example. A second aspect, it's a lack of modeling uh, of prevention processes, of uh, recovery processes, or uh, mitigation processes facing a very um, uh, 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 facing natural catastrophic uh, events, mm -hmm. and uh, it's uh, very important because we have really a lack of models because we can observe today uh, all over the world there is catastrophic event and we don't know what to do. So we need prevention processes, uh, recovery, classical actions, but we don't know. And uh, the concept of resilience. Resilience of human machine yes, systems, yeah. the, the role of human being into such event, I think <coughs> it's uh, interesting to, to discuss on. In, okay. in, the, in the railway and aviation sectors, for example, yeah. they're now looking at um, high resilient organizations. Exactly. So, the, so what they're doing is they're, they're looking first of all at the technology failures, but they're tracking them back through the social effects and they're creating models. 
So I think it, that this is a real opportunity for us, and I, I, I'm delighted that you're here because let's, um, as I do a lot in these events, let's have a cup of coffee, and, and if we can explore how the, those interactions might come. I'm, a, I'm actually a lapsed member of your technical committee, Human Machine Systems. I know the wonderful work that you guys do. Our CC meeting is just after your meeting. So. Is it? Okay. <laughs> um, so, so if I still have energy, I'll, I might come along. But the, the, um, the, the, other, the, the other point that you, you were making about uh, predict, predictive uh, models, I think if I pick, pick that up correctly, um, what's really interesting is to look back historically at the work of the, the, the technical committees within CC9. I'm closest to TC95, so I can speak about it. In 2003, a former chair of TC95 uh, presented a paper, and in the paper he predicted a migration crisis in the intermediate term on the basis of the data that he was looking at and an understanding of control engineering and control science. Um, uh, he, he, he's, uh, he had worked previously as a global forecaster and was a long-term member of, of IFAC. And that's the sort of thing that we could be doing, you know, and this is part of the challenge. And, if, and he was, he's also, pre he, he predicted it on the basis of climate data and also other data with regard to conflict. So we, we have something to say, is, which is what you're inviting us to do and to engage in these things. If, Okay, I'm just watching the time. I think we're just on time, so I'm going to close there. I don't see any more hands and people to, who want to come in. If you do want to come into the conversation, we can take it um, afterwards in any event. Um, just to close by saying that I, I met with Steve, who's writing this history of IFAC, and uh, I had a conversation with Steve, a really interesting guy, and we were talking about the heartbeat of IFAC, and he, he described to me how IFAC for him is first and foremost a family, and of course, as I've said in an earlier session, you know, sometimes families can be dysfunctional, as Steve pointed out to me. A family is a social system, okay? And so we're, the, the CC9 is really in the heartbeat of IFAC. I want to leave, uh, I think that's where we could leave it today to think about this. We're, we're actually a social system ourselves. Thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to hearing from you in due course. Enjoy the rest of IFAC.